Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you had a lovely weekend. So today we are going to be getting our week started with one of the histories. Today we are looking at Henry V. As always, the monologue is in the description below. Take a moment to pause me, read it, and come on back. So, Henry V. Clearly, it takes place after Henry IV. And I mentioned the young prince in when I discussed Henry IV last week. That kid who was a kind of rough-and-tumble ne'er-do-well is now king of England, and he is, in the course of this play, he looks at some things and goes, hey, you know what, I think some of those lands that the king of France currently owns belong to me by birthright, so I'm gonna tell the king of France he needs to give me those. And if he doesn't, I'm gonna go fight him. Because if you know anything about history, you'll know that England and France have kind of hated each other's guts for centuries. It's kind of tradition at this point. So, the king of France and his and the king of France's son naturally say, "No, Henry, we're not going to give you this land. We don't think it belongs to you." And Henry says, "Okay, fine. I'm coming with an army." So, he marches into France and starts fighting. He wins a few major victories and then after one, he does start retreating back toward the coast. His army has been a little bedraggled. They're a little run down. And then comes the big one. So this monologue in particular, from a literary standpoint, takes place just before the major event of this play. So everything in the play leads up to this moment. It is the Battle of Agincourt, or Agincourt, or I don't know how to actually pronounce it. Um, but it is a real battle that took place between France and England, and obviously this is a dramatization of it, but in the play at least, Henry and his forces are vastly outnumbered by the French. And the speech that we're looking at today is kind of Henry's this is our time, this is our moment speech. Uh, if we look back at what I did last week with Henry IV and we talked about Falstaff and his honor speech and how he basically said honor was a crock, Henry is taking the exact opposite spin. Henry, at this point in his life, is now like, if I am going to die, I'm going to die with honor. I do not covet anything. I do not want anything. I don't want money. I don't want fancy things. But you know what? I want my honor. And I believe that whatever happens today, we will be held in honor. And essentially, Henry inspires the nobility that are around him using this by saying, you know, Look, I don't want any more people. Yes, we're outnumbered. Yes, we are likely going to lose because we are so vastly outnumbered. Our men are sick and tired and hungry. But I would not wish one man more because we few, should we win this day, are going to be remembered forever. And if you look at it, he really has because this day, this battle is incredibly uh, historically significant, and it's in one of Shakespeare's plays, so 400 years later, we're still talking about it. So Henry's right there, and it's very interesting because this is kind of a turning point for all of these people that are with him because uh, there's a guy mentioned Westmoreland who starts out, he's very much like, uh, I wish we had more reinforcements, Henry, and after this speech, Westmoreland's like, all right, dude. I wish it was just you and me now against these guys, just the two of us. Come on, let's do this. And he changes completely. So from a literary perspective, this is Henry basically rallying the troops and making sure that everybody is on the same page, ready to go. From a character perspective, this is really interesting because you would think that this kind of raw, raw speech, this kind of thing where he's pushing them to be more brave, more bold, would be very big and bombastic, and it's not. It's not. Henry goes through and is just very calm about this. And he just lays out that if this happens, if we have this day, this is what's, what it's going to look like in the future. And he's basically, what, what I would imagine is that during this, he's going to each one of these lords that are with him, each one of these people, and getting right to them and saying, no, today is our day. So... Here we go. 
the St. Crispin's Day speech from Henry V. What's he that wishes so? My cousin, Westmoreland. No, my fair cousin. If we are marked to die, we are enough to do our country loss. And if to live, the fewer men, the greater share of honor. God's will, I pray thee, wish not one man more. By Jove, I am not covetous for gold, nor care I who doth feed upon my cost. It yearns me not if men my garments wear. Such outward things dwell not in my desires. But if it be a sin to covet honor, I am the most offending soul alive. No, faith, my cause, wish not a man from England. God's peace, I would not lose so great an honor as one man more, methinks, would share from me for the best hope I have. Oh, do not wish one more. Rather, proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my host, that he which hath no stomach to this fight, let him depart. His passport shall be made and crowns for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the Feast of Crispian. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand at tiptoe when this day is named and rouse him at the name of Crispian. He that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors send say, Tomorrow is St. Crispian. Then he will strip his sleeve and show his scars, and say, These wounds I had on Crispin's day. Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot, but he'll remember with advantages what feats he did that day. Then shall our names, familiar in his mouth as household words, carry the king, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Gloucester, be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin, Crispian shall never go by. From this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. For he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves accursed. They were not here. And hold their manhoods cheap whilst any speaks that fought with us on St. Crispin's day. And that is how you rally the troops, boys and girls. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.